So we're here with this matchup. We mentioned the last game was for an outright championship. So Kel, with a win tonight, would pull a, a piece of the championship away from Santa Cruz. And for both these teams, it does not get any bigger than this. No, it doesn't. You've, they've gone after each other twice so far this year. They've split. So Kel winning the one in the Dad's Club tournament, but it's the one that mattered as far as league. Santa Cruz got it, so they know everybody very well. You kind of see coming into this one, the Knights got took down Scotts Valley and Aptos, which is a huge win for Soquel. The Cardinals defeated SLV. They've had a little bit easier time the last two games have the Cardinals against SLV and St. Francis. Both very, very easy wins. At least the last couple of games have been. So Stu Walters and his Knights, they've had to work a little bit harder, especially against the, the very tough Aptos Mariners who finished last night with a win against Scotts Valley. They finished their season now 10 and 2. I know we got this one before we got the results. So Santa Cruz 10 and 1, Aptos 10 and 2, Soquel 9 and 2. So you can see what this means as far as first place is concerned in the SCCAL. So who's going to be number one when we get to the tournament? It's anybody's guess. Yeah, it could be a three way tie for first with a victory. By Soquel tonight, we see the prep rankings from the Santa Cruz Sentinel, our friends at www.santacruzsentinel.com. And a pick out of a hat between Santa Cruz, Soquel, and Aptos, who's the best team in the area? You know, it's a really tough one. And Watsonville has a very good ball club, too, down there in the southern part of the county. The, all the way around, good basketball is played here in Santa Cruz County. Yeah, we'll see two of the best teams and one of the best coaches for Stu Walters and his coach's keys. And this is very true. He's going to have to control the tempo of this game because Santa Cruz is going to want to come out and run. Keep SC from the free throw line and limit the high percentage shots. And what that means, Santa Cruz loves to go into transition. So if Stu and the boys can slow this pace down, they've got a chance to repeat on a victory. And there is Coach Walters, longtime coach here. His dad coached baseball at SoCal for many, many years. Go to long the other side. Friend with uh, Bill Domhoff, who's just in his third year, but he's been around Santa Cruz for a while. Ah, uh, he's born and bred here. His dad teaches up at the UC. Transition defense. You know, in other words, get that rebound and get down the floor in the same way if Santa Cruz or Cal gets it, they've got to hustle back down. Rebound well, they've got to own the paint, basically is what Domhoff wants them to do. And be patient on offense. They've got a lot of good shooters. They spread the ball around. Look for that good percentage shot. You don't have to hustle it. There's Bill Domhoff down there. Again, three years here. Teaches here at the school. Multi-sport athlete. You know, tremendous baseball player. Good hitter. Owns me. I'll <laughs> tell you. You know, I'll ask him how many hits have you got off of me, and he'll say all of them. All right, so it should be a good one. Both these teams playing for the one seed in the SCCAL championship. So Kel and Santa Cruz coming up next. This is part two of our doubleheader here on the CTV Game of the Week. Welcome back, game two of our doubleheader. The Santa Cruz boys and the SoCal Knight boys. It's gonna be a good one with Kurt Edwards. I'm Tim Swartz, and for both these teams, it's gonna be a real tough battle as they are not only fighting for this rivalry game for the final regular season game of the year, but a championship on the line. It is, you saw when we put up the results, it could be a three-way championship, so Therein goes how you're going to figure out who's what when everybody's basically beating everyone once. So the, the starting lineups are being announced here. And first of all, for Stu Walters and his SoCal boys, we look at their team. And uh, Sam Walters, a very good forward who's on that starting five. Sam Walters has been fantastic. ACOP also good. Shearer, the big center. He's going to be the one that I'm going to be looking for to try and clog up that middle. But all five of those guys are going to have to be flying down the floor. And on the other side for the Santa Cruz Cardinals, Bill Domhoff is in his third season with Santa Cruz. And we'll see their starting five. And it seems like no matter the sport we do, Jamie St. John is a star. Yeah, he's always a star. He's fantastic. He loves it. DeMeo also, number 45. All five of those guys, Jonah Hodges, we watched on the football field. You know that he can fly up and down the floor but they're fast, they're athletic, 
They attack, they love to play transition basketball, and they will work very, very hard. Now Jonah Hodges is headed for Cal next year, so whether he's gonna be a walk, he'll be there as a freshman, whether he's gonna redshirt or not, time will tell. But he's gonna give it a shot at the Big Blue on that uh, football squad next year. Yeah, and Jonah Hodges is a guy who proves that just get good grades, and you're a good athlete, you'll find a place, even in a major place like California. You see the starting lineup for the Santa Cruz Cardinals announced. Now they just announced 45 to Mayo. He averages nine points a game. Number 32, Chris Martin averages 11, Hanson nine. So essentially, Tim, they spread the floor, they spread the ball out. They're not a selfish group. Talking with Domhoff, his main thing is, you know, if the right Santa Cruz team shows up, we're gonna have a good game. We have a chance of winning it. Packed house here at Santa Cruz. You couldn't ask for anything more. A proud Santa Cruz Cardinals program looking for an outright SCCAL championship. If Soquel, you see in your screen, if they can pick out a victory today, they'll get a third of a champion. They'll be tri-champions. Then we break the coin out. Who's gonna get the bye for the first one on the SCCAL champion playoff? Tom Smith. Levin Dowie. Is Levon Dowie. Levon Dowie. Mr. Smith's gonna toss the ball up on the far side. Mr. Dowie right in front of the scorer's booth. Here we go. And tip is controlled by Santa Cruz. We know they love to run and gun. All the way down, laying this one up and good is Jamie St. John. They do not hesitate. They're gonna go with a two, two, one, a full court press. You've gotta be moving the ball down the floor, quick passes. And Coquel got away with that one. Shearer picked up the loose chain. Running the point will be Tucker Widget, a 5'8 guard into the lane from Sam Walters. Left wing, jumper, too strong for Ikra. And running and gunning the Cardinals. Backdoor cut underneath, laid up and good by Ty DeMeo. You can see they get down in offensive position very, very quickly. One thing that Santa Cruz, if anybody's ever watched hockey, Santa Cruz is the basketball equivalent. Line change after line change. You'll see a different five guys out there very quickly. Look at that defense. Ball is Tenacious. lost in the backcourt for a moment. And Sokel with Widget coming down the floor. Leaves up Shear. It's fouled by DeMeo, and he'll get it in. That was one of the things I said. Shear just stays down there on that offensive end. So they can get the ball breaking. He's going to come up, and he'll be one of those people to get the ball, too. Stu Walters calling the other four guys back here, saying, look it. <laughs> get back here, ready to play defense, because I guarantee you they'll show up in an awful big hurry. It is a running and gunning. The free throw is no good, but it is a team with Santa Cruz that has one speed, fast. Walker Hansen walks it up the floor and into the motion offense. Cross-court pass stolen away by Sokel. And Walters will cross half court. Sam likes to put the ball up. He's a good shooter, but he's also got good court awareness. And we got a reacher grabbing a hole. We got a foul underneath. I think that's going to go into St. John. Widget with the ball. Look at Tate Hodges. Really, really tough. Santa Cruz playing man-to-man. -man. Looks like they're overplaying everything. He's playing real aggressive. They will. They'll put bodies on it. They're not afraid to push and shove. Walters lost that ball. Lefty three, front iron, no good. Hodges lost the rebound, though. Quickly five on four for Soquel. Acrop, number 25, doing a good job of knifing through and getting that rebound. The offensive end, so Kel's got to figure out a way to somehow get their fair share of those rebounds. And that was one of those look, ask, and then break away. I got it. Shearer was there, and he saw a break. But unfortunately, Acrop passed the ball just as Shearer was moving away. 
Two minutes into the game, 4-2 lead for Santa Cruz here at home. Hodges explodes to the rim. Can't get it to go. DeMeo and Shear fought for it. It ends up with Shear with Sokel, who just loses the ball. Possession arrow Sokel. is pointing to Sokel. Do Walter say, okay, here's one of the things. You get that ball and you get it down there where people are going to rip. You've got to be able to rip that ball free. You can't start throwing elbows. You get to reset the 35 shot clock as you take the ball back out of bounds. Sam Walters would do that. Tom Smith right up above us, one of the referees. Here comes Sam. Notice that quick little rotation on the double team. They'll let you bring the ball in, and then they want to trap you. Walters thought about the step back three. Rotates up top, shot pass is telegraphed. It was deflected by the Cardinals. Walters down for sheer to Mayo, right in his grill. Straight away three on the way. Eight drop, no good. Hodges and DeMeo fight for the rebound amongst themselves. Hanson up top. Alley oop laid good for Clayton Conroy. That's what Santa Cruz does. They get the people down there before you get your defense set. And you can see defensively, so Kev was too far away from the basket. They didn't realize he was behind them. Rhythm three, right side. Widgets, no good. And they're running and gunning. Conroy, great outlet pass. All the way to the rack. St. John and one. See, here's the one thing, you, you look to see that St. John, the numbers were in favor of the SoCal Knights. But watch St. John's, he doesn't care. He's gonna go right to the basket. They didn't come out to stop him. He kept his momentum going. Defense was still moving. This big, strong young man plays aggressive basketball. Domhoff teaches aggressive basketball. It just fits the personality very, very well. Eight to two lead for Santa Cruz. Make it nine to two, St. John. Nails the free throw. See that soft 2-2-1 two, two, defensive zone. They look to trap you. Good job by Sokel to break the press. And out of the press, they match up in man-to-man. Acroft up the left wing. Shear catching it 35 feet straight away where Santa Cruz will let him have it. Conroy doing a nice job of just fighting through screens. Sokel just cannot find the handle on that suitcase. And DeMeo, he's called for the foul. That's his second personal, and it is. They'll get him out of there because they've got a lot of replacement parts. Bill Domhoff sitting down there on the end of the bench. Asking, I'm sure, how many fouls is that on DeMeo? Gets his answer. Santa Cruz defensively, Tim, you can see they play off, but they really do a nice job of reading their opponent. So if you have any, if you telegraph that pass, they're reaching, they're stepping right into where it's going to be. Thatcher Samets, a forward who's a 6 1 junior, is into the game. Bridget. Straight away, three. Front iron, back iron, no good for Akrop. Hodges in transition. Nice job by Widget. Nice rotation offensively does for Santa Cruz. Samet collects the rebound in his first action. St. John back. And pass. Samet lays it in. Showtime here in Santa Cruz. 11-2 Cardinals. Move without the basketball. John Wooden said it. Dean Smith has said it. Needed now the modern coaches. Move without it. You'll get it. You see Sokel looks a little bit rushed offensively as well. This defense will do that, Tim, because they are quick. They're switching, they're in your face, they like to push. And they're very, very aggressive, so. Their upbeat tempo, whether it's on the offensive side of the board or the defensive side, sometimes causes the other team to get out of their comfort zone. Now, how do you combat that as a, as a coach, if you're Sokel? But you've got to figure out a way most of you can start running it into your own offensive flow. Putting it in the basket is one thing. But you've got to start setting some picks and being tighter on those picks. So you're brushing people off. You can't wait for the defense to get set. Abraham picked up that foul. It's his first personal. Hodges had the foul on the play before with 3.15 remaining in the first quarter. Already five team fouls against 
Santa Cruz, Walker, three left wing, no good. And the rebound, Abraham. But he just throws it away. Widget on the other side, goes right in to Walker Hansen, and Hansen will pick up his first personal sixth team foul. See, time down before where St. Jean's went, St. John, excuse me, went right at it. Wiggett does the same thing. He sees the defender Hansen moving, so he continues his pass to the basket. He's just going to crash right into him. He knows he's going to get a blocking foul. First free throw is good for Widget. Finally, says Coach Walters, we got off the two. We got another crooked number up there in three. Seconds. Knuckleball. No good. Free throws are going to be big for Soquel rest of this half because with 250 remaining in the first quarter, they're going to have free throws every time they're fouled. They give the three and it's way long. But on the weak side, Hansen's put back is no good off the St. John miss. Rebound is out of bounds off of the Cardinals. See, defensively that time, Hansen was on one side, Samet was on the other. They were just going to deny any baseline passing lane to the, to the kid. So Cal Knight that had the rebound. Walters dribbles through two players. Swings the left corner to the hoop. No good, but St. John is called for the foul. I believe that's his second personal to the line. Lucas Cordoza. Well, there's another way that what Coach Walters and I think it's Soquel is trying to do, and that's start to attack the paint. Start driving. You know, clear out some lanes, take advantage of those lanes. Keep your rotation going, but if there's a break, go for it. You watch Widget do it, you watch Cordoza do it, they're going to go to the charity. They didn't make the layup, they're fouled hard, but at least they have an opportunity to get something from the free throw line. And Cordoza misses the first. Asai just went right down the lane, and that is a clear foul hitting the head of Cordoza with St. John. The other thing I think Soquel is going to try and do is the pass is there. Some get, they've got to get in some kind of a shooting rhythm, so that ball goes up quickly. He misses two, and that's not good. Yeah, just one for four at the line for Soquel tonight. They trail by eight. And the outlet pass is too long. Abraham is going to take it away, though, because it was touched up by John Tobin. On the other side, Hodges on the floor is fouled as he drove into the lane. Abraham does a nice job. Of just, he's a little bit of a moving screen, which he could have been called for. And as soon as Tobin reached in and touched it, Abraham was so quick he got it out of his way. And Hodges picks it up, and you can see the speed burner that we saw on the football field at number 20. Alley-oop attempt as the ball is just tossed up in the middle. And as he falls down, Chris Martin, another one of these cogs to this machine, puts it in. All the way on the other side, reverse lay-in, and a nice play by Tobin. Good job, and you said reverse layup. He used the rim to protect his shot. Very, very wise. Eight-point Cardinals lead, 100 seconds remaining first quarter. Conroy at the free throw line and couldn't quite put it up and in. Switch it for Soquel will slow it down. Work the offense and your shot, but if you catch it, you better get ready to shoot. There's your shot. Switch it off balance, air ball. Sammet rebound, outlet. Hodges to Martin up the left wing. Back to Hodges. When they get into that offense, they set it up. Watch how quickly Santa Cruz swings the ball around. 21 seconds on the shot clock. Hodges setting up the play. Hodges to Martin on the back cut. Back up top, left wing. Hodges, three, looking good. Perfect. 11-point lead for the Cardinals. Move it in, move it out. Sam and doing it with Conroy, excuse me. And he'll lay it up, no good. The ball is tipped out by Sokel. They've got a two on one, three on one. This one's left off. Tobin lost that ball, and it dropped. That all ball came back down with it. That's one of those, you're coming down on a full court, Tobin goes in, ball gets blocked down low. 
It wasn't anything up high, and that's a lot of good times. If you can just reach in, if you're one of the smaller men, to block the shot down in the areas you can do it at. Abraham, left side, pulls up, left elbow, jumper, rolls in. Conroy, nice shot. He's got four. Just one second, the off-balance three is no good for Soquel's Valacarcel. And we're at the end of one quarter of play. Santa Cruz wants to push the ball, they have. They've forced turnovers, they've done almost everything right. They lead 18 to five at the end of one quarter. And our boys, varsity basketball game of the week here on CTV Sports. With Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz. And uh, you gotta tip your cap to Santa Cruz. They've come out running and gunning. They have, and they've spread the ball around a lot. Salmon with two, Conroy with four. Hodges, we just saw him drop in a tray. Martin with two. St. John's, I guess he saw them early with five points, so they spread it out. Uh, Sam Walters, who's the number one scorer for Soquel, zero on the board. So here is our trivia question. Basketball got its start in, 19, in the 1890s with Kurt Edwards as a point guard, but the NBA did not start uh, until 1949. Which team won the inaugural 1949-50 NBA season? I'll give everybody a couple of clues. One, the team is still in existence. But okay. not playing in the city, but the city has a basketball team. We'll see some championships. We could see both these teams. Uh, we mentioned earlier we could see both those girls teams from these two schools. These, both these boy teams from these two schools could be playing a week and a day uh, from today at the, the SCCL championships. We we'll also have the wrestling championships. Hodges. This is as slow as Santa Cruz will go offensively, and as I say that, they move into high gear. Third, I was going to say third or fourth <laughs> gear. I don't think. Yeah, you're right. This isn't high. The old weave, the old Indiana weave, and that's a push. Uh, I was surprised there wasn't a basket interference call because Samick grabbed the the net, but it'll be two free throws for Chris Martin. Chris Martin and Santa Cruz is taking advantage of their athleticism and their ability to get up in the air. They're also doing a fine job because of their constant movement. They're looking to get in a good position to get that offensive rebound. Martin will make his first free throw attempt. Kind of a line drive type of a shot. And the second. Santa Cruz continues to go with a 2-2-1 type of a press. Look how the scoring's been for Santa Cruz, too. Five from St. John, three from Hodges, four from Conroy, four from Martin. It's been really everybody scoring. It hasn't been anybody. Now that's why they like to do it. They're not, they're a very unselfish group. Hodges doing a great job on Walter. Through the rain, Valacarral puts it in. Valacarral, Sell, excuse me. Cuts it to a 13-point lead for the Cardinals. Nice little switch action. Three on the way. Samet buries it. So Kell tries to break this passive 2-2-1. Two, two, and a hip check against Conroy. His first personal. Eighth team foul. One and one bonus for the junior, Cody Valakar Self. He gets a chance to get it go to it. And notice again, Sokel, their four guys are back there. Just waiting for Santa Cruz to show up on, on the offensive side. They're just going to concede if there's a miss here, they're just going to concede the rebound. Cody doesn't miss though. 15 point lead for Santa Cruz here at home. What's SoCal got to do to, to change what's going on? Well, if somehow or another they've got to do a better job of switching, but that's a little hard to do. And what Santa Cruz is also doing is Alcorcel makes both of those free throws. They've either got to start doing, get the ball inside and kick it back outside. Santa Cruz is making it very difficult to pass. Abraham loses this ball. Walters goes down to the floor. He lost it. St. John had it for a moment. Abraham flies into the scorer's table. And 
The ball will go to Soquel. Kind of gives you the idea of the intensity that Santa Cruz is playing at, as well as Soquel. They go flying right by us, take out the corner of the scorer's table. Sam Walters, this is an intense player as his dad is, or was. His dad's an intense coach. Widget bounces it to Shear, right block. No good. And Shear rolling for the rebound, but Hansen ends up with it. Coast to coast. Hansen, no look pass. Samet misses the open lay in. Stu Walters flying off the seat, going for the foul over the back. Dowie, the official here on this side, is going to give it to him. The Fellman is packed. Across from it, it is standing room only. Behind us, it is wall to wall people with the Santa Cruz band. And this is, this is the ticket, folks. If you don't have a ticket, at least you'll be able to watch it out here on TV. Exactly. Oh, big free throws for SoCal because they've been kind of panicked in this game. And to get open free throws and get easy points would be good, but that's not good. Missing the front end of a one-on-one. -one. Still a 14-point lead for Santa Cruz. Six minutes showing on the first half clock. Hodges goes all the way to the hoop, and he was fouled. I tell you, one thing that Hodges did really well on that one is, is he's coming around the left side. He's got the ball in his left hand dribbling. Watch his right forearm. He just is able to hook the defender widget just enough to get around him. That ball, you know, you could have had a foul called against Hodges for hooking, but that's not the way it goes. It's a blocking foul, but I think the SoCal player was in good stationary position. Hodges makes the first of two. It's that step, and of course, Tim, you've watched a lot of basketball, you've played a lot of basketball. If you can get that step and then throw that yeah. arm bar out there. Hodges, second free throw is no good. See how quick Santa Cruz is. Samet even in there getting a tip. Doesn't get the rebound. It causes uh, Soquel to have to fight for it a little harder. Walters collects it over Abraham. It just tips off the rim. Abraham seals the glass. Samet also down there on the contested side. Abraham doing a nice job of controlling the basketball. Hodges give it off for Samet. Too little bit too low for him. And it ends up last off of Soquel. Now we've been watching a little, not quite a quarter and a half, and you can see the phonetic pace that Santa Cruz has. And they always have somebody in the middle, whether they're parked there or they're cutting on through. Weave right through, and there's Sam with a nice and easy, nice easy move. Samet has seven, which leads all scores. All four guys for Santa Cruz were moving. Not all five guys for Soquel were moving. Widget takes the lane, lost the ball on his hip for a moment. Nice drop step. Shear will tip the rebound and it ends up with Samet of Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz three on two and a carry. Levy Richards with the carry. Just get that ball a little bit. And that's one of the things as you're going down, you have that little hesitation and you get that, turn that palm up. My day they call it palming. <laughs> Martin got the steal. Hodges thought about the three. Dishes right side, Levi Richards three. Got it. And that's the one that's hard to defend. You can throw that nail in from beyond the three point arch, 22, 24 feet. That's a tough one to defend. Because now your defense, what are you going to do? Do you extend out or do you stay back? If you extend out, Santa Cruz is so quick, they'll run something underneath. If you stay back, they'll kill you with threes or they'll get a better high percentage. Stu Walters right there, very frustrated, and I wouldn't blame him. He's down 20 points with 4.31 to go still in the second quarter. At 29 to nine, the Santa Cruz Cardinals are. We gotta start with our bell shots after we get to the line. Okay, let's come out. Let's come out and run box. Okay, Alex, you would look in for Sam and Cody on the duck in first. Okay, then we're gonna sit print screen. Come up and see if we can get an open three. If not, it's 
Running out of tackle, we gotta get to the foul line. Okay, all right, here we go, hang in there, let's go. Ready? Yeah, it's One, two, a great three, point three, by yeah. Coach Walters. 29 to nine's a score. Santa Cruz is really all over SoCal. Here's another just turnover. You can see how quick that defense goes. They're not afraid to double team. It's soft until you pull up the dribble. Then they'll immediately, there'll be two white shirts on you. He camps out 22 feet, thank you. And the one thing I think you notice is too, Kurt, is you saw the SoCal defense almost kind of running as a, as a pack towards the ball. They weren't organized, couldn't get into their man-to-man. -man. No, they, they really couldn't. The switching, that the, the picks that Santa Cruz sets are very, very good. Now Stu Walters will say an attack, and we'll get in our box, and we'll continue to attack. And that's one thing, so SoCal runs it offense, gets down inside, but he's taking the pass is missed. Hodges, long pass to Samix. Levi Richards open again for three, takes it long. But a nice rebound for Martin who had it taken away from him. Whoa. Shear is fouled by Hodges, he just jumped over him. Kind of gives you an idea of the athleticism of uh, young Jonah Hodges. Down they come, little hesitation, up and over he goes. Foul on the floor. Maybe they're gonna call that in a continuation. Two free throws any way you look at it, because that was the 10th team foul against Santa Cruz. And Hodges picked up a second. Shear will miss both. Now we get an opportunity. Mr. Smith found a violation on the lane by Santa Cruz, so Shear gets to shoot another one. Same result. Just three for nine at the line for Soquel. Hodges weaves through the lane, floats it up. Jonah Hodges, we know he can play football, we know he can play basketball. You're seeing tonight why we know he can play basketball. Nice job by Abraham to force everybody to the other side. Left wing three, back iron no good. Hodges with the rebound. One on three, he brings it up to Levi Richards. Up top for Hodges. 22 point lead for Santa Cruz, they didn't expect this. See, sheer way out top with Samet. Santa Cruz, Soquel is really trying to force the defense. Whistle underneath. Yeah, sheer ends up on the ground, but he blocked the Santa Cruz Cardinal who was trying to get to the hoop. Six team foul against Soquel is big Kobe Underwood comes in a 6 7 junior. Heights just keeps on coming. Abraham rotates it up the left wing for Levi Richards. Tries to break down the Soquel man to man. Abraham between the rings, 31 9 with 2.45 remaining second quarter. Right side, Sam at three, rock iron no good. Abraham picks up the loose change, tried to go up, and he was fouled by Shear. Now that shot was off, and he saw Abraham, he never slowed down, he was consistently moving. The shot was up, he continued on his rotation and went right after the board. Ended up getting the rebound. Underwood was underneath there also. Didn't get it, doesn't matter. If you can attack the paint and attack the backboard, you've got a good opportunity to get a rebound. Abraham misses the first of two. Stu Walters bringing a couple of people in. Tobin, number 44, one of the new Knights on the floor. And the second free throw was good. Ball just lost off the foot of Widget. That, I mean, that's an unforced error, but it's forced because this team just gets in your face so often, you gotta move so quickly. Kirk. Exactly, you're, you're so right. They didn't get in front of Hodges and he was able to blow right by Walters, Sam did got lucky that time. Way up, no good. 
second effort for Tobin. But he was fouled on the floor. Nice job by Val Carcel. He comes in, uses his body very well, puts it up left-handed, doesn't get it, but you can see the Knights are in there. Tobin eventually gets fouled, so he's going to go to the free throw line and do something that we really haven't seen a, much of for the Knights, and that's make a free throw. A three for nine at the line. Three for ten. This gives a coach nightmares or a very bad hairline. I'm sitting next to a coach and I can see the effects. <laughs> Tobin will make the second. 22 point lead for the Cardinals. You see, just for a moment, Coach Walters, I mean, what do you think is going through his mind? How can I snap the momentum and get it back in favor of the Knights? Damn it, one-handed fling pass to Hodges. Levi Richards, three left side, way too long. Underwood ends up with the rebound, and he'll scoop it in. Kobe Underwood. And the place loves it. A fan favorite here in Santa Cruz. Well, Toby's also a water polo player, but he's going to take that 6-7 frame and wingspan, try and make it on the basketball floor. Walters drives in. The left wing wide open three is no good. Hodges ends up at the rebound. Doesn't have number. He's still going to push it. Sam it. Lays it off the glass. No good. Charging call. Good job by Wiggett. He's held his ground. Tim, I think one of the hardest things you, to do for a young player is to stand there, watch number five. He sets up. He knows he's going to get hit. That's a pretty good acting job, too. The Academy Awards were already given, but either way. Next year. Next year. It's always next year. Another substitution. Messiah Williams. Now one thing you don't want to do is pull that dribble up and let these two guys get on top of you. Sam Walters gets it across the timeline. 110. First half. 34-10. The lead for Santa Cruz. Widget pulls up. High floaters, no good. Ball is lost underneath. Tobin pump fake. And he was fouled. By the player who just checked in, Williams is the 11th different Cardinal to play. I'm telling you, it's a line change. It's hockey. They'll play them all. I think they got... Everybody will probably get in this game if they haven't all gotten this game already. I think only two haven't checked in so far for Coach Dom Hoff's Cardinals. And they're, not, they're not afraid to foul. And you know what? I mean, I, I do think... Uh, Kurt, that, that they're not afraid to foul because they have so many players that can play. There's you know, the guys getting in foul trouble, but you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, because they have players off the bench who can just fill in a spot. But when you're too deep in every position and you have the athleticism that they have, go ahead. Go aggressively. If you make the foul, we have somebody to come in for you. I mean, Underwood doesn't see too much playing time, but he's in there right now. Dangerous pass to Levi Richards, and he will have a nice little floater in the lane. Le Inside Levi Richards is not exactly one of, the, one of the biggest scorers for this team, but as you see, he gets the ball, goes down to the hoop. He has some serious game. He's got game, he's got hustle. There's one thing. You don't have, you know, you... You want to be good, hustle. You don't have to be great to hustle. And here's Levi Richards again. He's igniting this lock, this gym as Hodges called for a travel. 38-12, 20 seconds left, shot clock's dead. The question in the traveling call, but Jonah was holding on to the ball as he was taking that extra step. Nice passing by the Knights. Widget, Tobin is fouled. Well, here's one thing about Underwood. It's six foot seven. He really doesn't have to jump if he gets underneath, especially defensively. He just puts that rooftop over the top of you, and you're going to have to jump up into it. You see all the different uh, banners here at Santa Cruz High School, and the biggest one they have, a Division Three state championship back in 2005 with Pete Newell Jr., who is in the house tonight. And 
Bill Domov, I'm sure, was real proud of that state championship, but that's the biggest banner they have in here, the, uh, the hundreds of banners they have here. They, you know, they've been around for over 100 years, so they should have a couple of banners in this building. Pete Newell Jr., great coach, many, many championships. Bill Domhoff played on some great teams, as did the, uh, Pat Jones. And Soquel cannot beat the clock. I mean, it was just that type of half for the Soquel Knights. They run into the locker room. 38 to 14 is the score as the uh, Soquel Knights have just gotten kind of uh, blindsided and put into a hornet's nest here at Soquel, here at Santa Cruz High School. And uh, really for the Santa Cruz Cardinals, they wanted to play a high tempo, running gun, high flying game, and they have so far. Rusty Reed, the third member of our broadcast crew, is standing by with Stu Walters. With Soquel coach Stu Walters, the intensity of that half was through the roof. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere for high school basketball. We knew it coming in is, you know, this is what it's all about. This is why you, you know, work. I told our guys, why you work since you've been in third grade for games like this, so it's fun. Unfortunately, it's not going our way right now. And you're down in enemy territory. How will you adjust at the half here? Um, we're going to go work on our foul shooting, I guess, on the basket. <laughs> you know, we got to get some shots to drop. They dominate us in every phase of the game. So um, we're kind of embarrassed, and I think we're going to come out and fight them a little bit in the second half and see if we can get back in it. All right, good luck. Yep. Stu Walters. So we will be back with the second half of action. Santa Cruz in command. So Kill will have to fight back in enemy territory. We'll be right back. Score at the half, the high-flying Santa Cruz Cardinals are all over SoCal 38-14 on our presentation of CTV Sports. I want to thank some of the people that have helped make this broadcast possible. Santa Cruz Diner at the Santa Cruz Diner. You always find great food at reasonable prices, family-owned and operated since 1998. Santa Cruz Diner is kid-friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz. On the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And by Upper Crust and Pizza. Upper Crust Pizza and Pasta on Santa Cruz West Side at Mission and Swift. Family owned and operated since 1979. Upper Crust offers nightly dinner specials. And every Tuesday is all you can eat pizza, dine in or take out. On the web at uppercrustsc.com or call 423-9041. So Santa Cruz has come out with the coach Kurt Edwards. We'll bring in Pete Newell Jr. in just a moment after we check out these highlights. And well, Kurt, Santa Cruz MO is to run and they have run. They run all the time. You can see how quick they get down in transition. Conroy beats everybody down for that easy bucket. Tobin going up underneath. Nice reverse layup. Way to use the rim to protect yourself and not get it. But you can see how well they attack the basket, kick it outside. They're dangerous inside, and Santa Cruz is also dangerous outside. Conroy again doing a nice little step, get some good rhythm, get a shooter's bounce on that one. Watch the battle go inside. They are not going to quit on defense either. They're able to just get that tenacious 2-2 zone defense. And Richards is able to get that steal and come down in for the nice, easy layup. So Kel just has to ratchet up that intensity a little bit as they bring the ball down the floor. You can see Santa Cruz just laying in wait. Sam Walters a little behind the back move. That time they're able to beat that press to get the ball down to Widget. But just you just watch how tough that defense is. Okay, so we're here at the half. 38-14, and we are joined by a very special guest. Uh, man, uh, this is not your first game in Santa Cruz, correct? <laughs> no. Pete Mill Jr. And uh, Coach, before we get into this game a little bit, how fun is it to see uh, coaches all around the league that you kind of uh, brought up now as head coaches? I'm interested and proud of all of them. And uh, Stu and Bill D are two wonderful coaches, as it were, Pat and, and John Wilson in the previous game. So it, it's... It's a blessing for me to be able to be around to watch them coach, for sure. Yeah, I've got to say, this is an alumni day for you, with not only the guys on the floor, but I'm seeing a lot of your old players up in the stands. Right, and, and uh, actually, uh, Thatcher Samet was our ball boy the last year that I coached. Uh, his brother, Cliff, was one right. of our star players. So, um, you know, he was like in fourth or fifth grade and now he's a junior and, and grown and, and plays very well. He's, he's doing really well. This has got to bring back some nice memories uh, for you 
I know you and Bill Warmerdam used to square off quite a bit. Bill, by the way, never did turn the heat up in the gym. Well, <laughs> y you can say it, but I felt it. And uh, actually, one year I did uh, uh, I did catch him doing it. But oh, yeah, I know he, you did. a wonderful man and a really good coach. One thing I learned from Bill was to keep the players as loose and relaxed as possible. And, and uh, that was something that, that I learned that, that I, as a coach was too intense in the 70s. And by the eight, when the 80s came around, I actually started with when Billy D was a sophomore. I realized I had to pull back my intensity because the kids were playing hard. And then I used Coach Warmerdam as a model on that. He, he was a good coach, and it was fun watching both of your squads square off in the 80s. Well, it was he, fun. He'd come out at, before the game and he'd draw a chalk line at center court and he'd say, I couldn't go on his side of the, of the court during the game. Sometimes they did that when I was younger. You know what <laughs> I thought it was is this is where his team would shoot from, too. Exactly. Well, his famous line was, you can see the basket shoot. That's exactly right. Hey, looking at this game, watching, watching Santa Cruz play, how do you think about their offenses that they're running? They're very unselfish, Santa Cruz, and they play hard. Their defense keys their offense. and. Tonight was just an example that, that they were they were much uh, much more intense than uh, what we saw before. So we'll toss it over to one of uh, Pete Newell Jr.'s old players, Bill Domhoff, who's Bill standing Domhoff, by with Rusty Reed. Head coach of the Santa Thanks, Cruz Cardinals. Sir. Holy cow. What's the potion? What'd you give these guys before the game? I'm not sure, but I hope uh, I do it again. But I think the boys just came out fired up tonight. They were... Uh, Excited to play at home in this big game for this big crowd, and uh, they're just doing the best they can right now. We hope we can keep it up. Was it because of the last couple games? I mean, did that have a factor, or would that have happened regardless? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, they want to come out here tonight and prove something. Uh, they want to show that they can play with anybody in our league and do a good job of it, and uh, they're doing a really good job so far. Can they match that intensity after sitting down for eight minutes? That's the big question, Rusty. That's what I'm hoping, and we're all hoping. And, uh, you know, I know SoCal's going to come out fired up. They're a great team, and uh, they've proven so all year, and uh, it should be a great second half. All right. All right. Enjoy it. Good Thank luck. You, Rusty. Good. Good. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Bill Domoff, Santa Cruz Cardinal coach. Let's go back to Tim and Kirk. Thanks so much, Rusty. And we want to also thank... Uh, Pete Newell Jr. sat with us. Great to talk to him. And uh, Kurt, I think uh, you guys could have your own probably 10-hour show going off some of those 80s battles you were talking about and all the games that he's, he's seen here. He's a great coach and a tremendous teacher. Even after he retired, he continued to mentor many of his coaches and go to the practices and help them out. You know, you see Pete here. He's retired. Bill Dodge, a great basketball coach for Santa Cruz sitting over in the far corner. Ron Walters, dad of Stu Walters, great baseball coach at SoCal and administrator at SoCal High. Down in the other corner, Jeff Dunn, noted author, who still hasn't signed my Sarah Palin book, but I will mention that on the air. You see, it was uh, Pappas from the first game talking with Pete Newell Jr., current player for the Santa Cruz girls. As we're back into action, and a foul is called. It's going to go against Hodges. Well, one thing I'm certain, and Stu had mentioned it, he doesn't know quite what to do. Make free throws would be, you know, number one on the list. But also start to attack. Send people to the basket. Game two of our doubleheader is the first free throw is good for Akrup. Game one went to the Soquel girls in a battle of 10 and 1 SCCAL team. They defeated. Santa Cruz, 57-46 behind our player of the game, Regine Graves, 27. So Kel coming out in a press. And you can see the tenacity. Look at the bullishness. They're going to get a blocking call as Walker Hansen just dropped the elbow and just kept driving right on in. Right call by the official on the far side, Tom Smith. But this is what SoCal plays, aggressive, loose, unselfish basketball. Hodges collects up top. Hansen through the lane. DeMeo for St. John. Back out to Mayo between the rings. They'll reset the offense. The deepest hit got into a shot clock. 15 remaining through the lane. Wild was Hansen and a blocking foul. Hey, crops go at me. I got a block. 
And apparently he wasn't quite set on that one. That's his second foul. Second team foul as well. So Walker Hansen goes to the line, gets an opportunity to make his first point on the, on the evening. Hansen with two free throws. Makes the first. Now Hansen comes into the game averaging nine points a game. Makes his first one, so it gives you an idea of the balance to which Santa Cruz is able to put points on the board. Grass nice is week. broken. You've got to be a little bit more in control if you're going to make that shot. That running leap in Lena works sometimes, but it's not a great percentage shot. Hodges up top, rotates it. St. John left wing, dishes back. Hodges open, rhythm, three, too strong. St. John rebound. It was blocked cleanly by... The big center down low, Shearer, and it'll be a jump ball. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Hansen's going to take the ball out, out of bounds. DeMeo collects it underneath, and that one was deflected away. St. John was pulled down almost by Akrop, who pulled up his third foul. Now Scott's going to be in trouble, and Sue's going to have to get somebody else in there really quick. Forty to sixteen with six forty-four remaining in the third quarter. Tobin checks in. John Tobin checks in for the Soquel Knights. St. John back door for DeMeo. The inbounds pass is no good. Foul called against Hansen. Hansen just got a little bit of a reach. Oh, I guess a push. That's. That's, that's a silly foul. Bill Domhoff can't be too upset with it, but one of the things these coaches are always going to have to do is teach for the next game, teach for the next tournament. See how fast that Santa Cruz is able to get defensively to where they want to go. Walters, three straight away. Back iron, no good, and rising for that rebound. Hansen brings it up himself, double team. Spins in the lane. It's blocked cleanly by Shear. And a possession arrow is pointing to Soquel. Calling it a, a, a jump ball. I think for a second, Shear might have thought that he was getting called on the foul. Go up amongst the trees and run into the branches. I think Shear also thought that he just took the ball away. I thought like, that's exactly what I thought. Soquel trailing by 24. Rhythm three, left wing. Widget on the way. No good. Shear offensive rebound. He puts it up and in. Nice battle by Shear. Fourth point on the night. He's got to be more aggressive inside and demand the ball. Start moving and pushing people around. Aaron pass and the collision. Conroy and Shear. Fouls against Shear. Now it's going to be the ball out of bounds right in front of the Santa Cruz bench. St. John's going to take it out. And Jamie St. John, part of a very talented Santa Cruz football team. Backdoor alley, you pass, and it's thrown up and good by Conroy. You've noticed a lot of those alley oops, all the way we saw one to DeMeo a little bit earlier. Santa Cruz is not opposed, and they teach it, they practice it. They've got guys who can get up above the rim, you might as well throw it there. Walters misses a three, and the rebound's picked up by St. John. And oh, by the way, anybody can dribble. And that was a foul against Soquel. And coming up and clapping was Cordoza. And now a technical foul against Cordoza and one against Hodges. Both of them starting to pop off a little bit more than they want to do. Cordoza probably thought the foul was going to go against him, but he turned to the Santa Cruz bench, the Cardinal bench, made a couple motions like, yes, I'm number 22 or Soquel or whatever. And Tom Smith says, now we're not going to have any of that. We're not going to go on a mockery. Quick technical. Yeah, Cordoza kept trying to initiate contact with St. John. Well, he was trying to stay with and in front of St. John. And St. John, he was continuing to push him in forearm. And Cordoza was pushing back. I can't see, you know, nothing wrong with either one of those plays. 
you knew a foul was going to be called. I actually thought it was an offensive foul and I thought it was a bad call. 42 18 Santa Cruz leads Soquel. Ball will be taken out at half court on the bottom of your screen. You can see it is standing room only. We'll take a look. You'll see the contact just initiated right there. Yep, I still think it's an offensive foul. The push away was by St. John's. Of course, it's one man's opinion sitting over here, and the guy in the zebra gets paid more than I do. Underneath and one for Jamie St. John. I don't think he's the guy to anger on the floor. No, he's the last guy that you want to get. He's the guy you want to have in a fight, but he's not the guy that you want to get angry on the floor. And you notice all of Santa Cruz's players dribble the ball down the floor. They can control the ball, so it doesn't matter whether it's Hodges or St. John or Conroy or DeMeo. They bring it down the floor. A free throw for St. John rims out. Falls out to the right wing for Soquel. As Casey Snowden is into the game for the first time. Widget thought about the three. Levi Richards hand check. Widget with a nice quick first step. Widget trying to make up ground, reached around and grabbed it. So there's already been seven team fouls against Soquel in the first two minutes in 54 seconds. That's the fourth team foul against Santa Cruz. You've got to keep in mind, too, the last uh, little incident with the technical given to Cordoza. That's two team fouls. All the way to the hoop, and an left hand floater is good for Vala Carcel. Full court pressure from Soquel, and they'll take it away. Vala Carcel up the court, he comes. Swings near wing. Walters open three on the way. Got it. 44 23. So Kell's going on a run. Hanson splits the defenders, bounces it off. DeMeo open lay in. That's what I'm talking about the pace that Santa Cruz makes. You make the shot, big deal. We'll take it out of bounds. We'll get it down the floor. We don't care who's got the ball, they're dribbling it down. Straight away, Snowden's three. In and out. That was a big miss because Soquel could have cut it to 20 with four minutes remaining in the third. To the hoop, all the way. Conroy leaves it off and DeMeo lays it in. Santa Cruz continues to be able to push the ball all the way down into the paint. Here comes Conroy. He's right at the top of the key. The defense switches to him as he's getting closer. And DeMeo moving very well. He's to the left of the basket, slides in without the basketball. Hands up, asking for the ball. Gets it, and it's an easy bucket. Substitutions. It's Nathan Vinson is into the game for the first time. Scott Acrop and Samet rechecks into the game for Santa Cruz. Or he was going to check in, but he's going to supposed to come in for DeMeo, who's the shooter. Or he's not. Conroy comes off the floor. If high school rules are the same as college, if you substitute in for the shooter, shooter's done for the day. DeMeo puts it in. Plus, why would you? Exactly. Nicely done by Soquel. They've got to move the ball around with a little bit more sharpness or crispness, if you will. Acrop left it off the right wing, but Vincent had taken space up the left wing and left the right corner open. And that's when, you know, good court awareness and where your people are. You have to have your head up when you're dribbling, looking to where everybody is. That was just a tough one, as Vincent was open and moved to get a better angle on a shot. St. John goes up strong, and he was fouled by Vincent. The one way that Santa Cruz plays basketball, which is aggressive, hard, and fast, also translates over to you know, the Santa Clara County style of basketball. They play big and physical. They play right up around the rim. Some teams do have that slower transition game, but Santa Cruz doesn't care what your transition game is. They have one speed, all ahead full. St. John's at the free throw line. Shearer checks out. 
And for the first time, Dylan Hunter's into the game. So Soquel has played every player on their roster. Santa Cruz has played 13 of 14 on theirs. Second free throw good, 51-23. Santa Cruz opens up a 28-point lead, which is uh, their biggest of the game. Snowden fouled from behind by Hansen. Fifth team foul against Santa Cruz. On the other side, the Cardinals are already in the double bonus. Now Santa Cruz wants to continue to go on, but they don't want to start playing sloppy defense. They want to continue to play with their feet and get away from any of these reaching fouls. Left wing, three ball, corner pocket. Vincent. Hansen breaks the press. High screen from DeMeo. Hansen off the bump, swings. Levi Richards, another three on the way, and he nails it. Levi is just having a great afternoon. Ten points so far. I mean, that is the lead for Santa Cruz. This shows you on any given night, this Cardinal team gets so many different options. Eight crops, threes off, but an offensive rebound for the Knights. The second attempt is no good. Shamit trying to outlet the ball. It's lost and laid in by Vincent. Nice job by Vincent, just being tenacious and not reaching, keeping his arms up, playing with his body and his feet. 54-28, crossing half court, Hansen. Screen from Salmon, he won't take it. Hansen all the way to the hoop, got it, but he travels. <laughs> Substitutions, Martin checks back in, and Abraham, they replace DeMeo and Hansen. Well, at this point in time, I don't care who the coach is, you're just keeping to try and, or trying to keep your team focused, playing solid basketball. Right in front of us. There's the jam, there's your steal. Levi Richards leaves it off. St. John, no look dish to Martin, who falls down. And it's out of bounds to Soquel. Walters back into the game. He replaces. Vela Carcel. Bill Domhoff down at the other end. Stu Walters right in front of us, giving a sage advice to his young basketball team. In other words, don't pick your dribble up when you're sitting right along the baseline or the side of the court. Vincent leaves it off. Acrop, open three, just left of the top of the key, can't make it. Snowden loses that ball. Abraham just ripped it away. All the way down the court, Levi Richards. Just throws that one straight up, and it hit the top of the bat, oh. the stanchion. That would have been a great, what is it, a horse? Yes. Call? Okay. Off the, bounce it off the stanchion a couple of times and then into the bucket. Exactly, off the top of the backboard, off the stanchion, off the scoreboard. There's eight drop, travel. That's one of the things with this 2-2-1 two, two, zone, they continue to stay with it. They're not gonna back off at all. You pull up the dribble, they'll be right on you really quick. You better have somebody to pass it to, and that's where movement comes in. Abraham trying to beat a five-second call from Snowden. Abraham is going to be called for five. Five-second call if you're within an arm's length, usually, of the def uh, offensive player for five seconds while they're dribbling, then it's whistled. Very rare. Walters. Will cross half court. Flung out to the right side for Acrop. He fell down, but a foul's called. He was pushed down. 121 remaining third quarter. 54 28. Santa Cruz leads Soquel with a victory. Santa Cruz would win an outright SCCAL championship at 11 and 1. And they'd have the one seed for the SCCAL tournament, which means a, a bye to the semifinals. That's exactly what you want to have if you're Santa Cruz and Bill Domhoff. You get a chance to go and watch the team that you're going to be playing or potentially the team that you're going to be playing. Now, when you were a coach, Kurt, would you have preferred to watch the team you're playing or just get the day off? What, what would you do? Both. <laughs> I get the day off. I'd get, one nice, get a little workout in with my team, a little shoot around. Then you go and watch the watch who's going to be playing so you get an idea who's hot, what type of an offensive defense they might be running. Here comes the freight train. St. John was tripped 
from behind. No. Traveling. Well, the tripping didn't matter. Incidental contact. Watch this. Down he comes. Just loses his balance. I mean, that is a big body coming down here. Full time out called for by Santa Cruz. 54 28. 59.2 seconds remaining in the third quarter here in Santa Cruz. We thank you for joining us here for our CTV Game of the Week. And let's test your brain. The trivia question Who was the first ever NBA champion in the 1949 1950 season? Well, it's the Lakers. But it's the Minneapolis Lakers. They defeated the Syracuse Nationals 4-2 in a best of seven. Now, do you know where Syracuse went to? I'm going to let you tell me that one. Philadelphia. That a bit. Cheerleaders, everybody here at the Feldman is having an absolutely great time. Band behind us. It's fired up a little bit. Not a empty plank in the place across from us and behind us and behind us good crowd all the way around and many a great games and the enthusiasm that has come from games here at at this gym has just been unbelievable you see right behind us three rows deep yeah of they're even playing a basketball game back there they got a pickup game this place is huge folks they park b52s in here in the off season <laughs> We're back to action. 24 second shot clock, game clock differential. And a foul is called. St. John's gets a foul called against him. And Walters is going to go to the charity strike. Walters will have the one and one. First free throw is good. And the second is also good. Both these teams will be shooting free throws every foul from here on out. Abraham crosses half court, tried to thread the needle to St. John. Abraham had it, the ball is still loose. And finally, Sokel ends up with it with the shot clock dead. Walters, left wing for Snowden, and a double dribble. Double dribble. The defense, I've said it many times that the Cardinals bring out, will cause that kind of turnover because they will put their body on you. They Conroy will force you to go around them. And Abraham playing catch in the backcourt. Martin, back to Abraham, he crosses half court. Shot clock not a factor, 15 seconds remaining third quarter. Levi Richards up top. Just two starters on the floor for Santa Cruz. Martin with seven seconds. Runs into Walters, swings it out. St. John with three seconds. Hesitation, dribble drive. That one's blocked by Vincent. And that'll do it for the third. 54-30. Santa Cruz leads Soquel here in our game of the week on CTV. We mentioned an SCCAL championship, a part of a championship on the line with Kurt Edwards. My name is Tim Swartz, and, and Kurt, it's really been Santa Cruz's game tonight. I give SoCal credit, they only had 14 in the first half. They just had a 16-point third quarter, but it looks like it's gonna be too little against this very potent Santa Cruz Cardinals team. Well, I think Santa Cruz has sort of turned it down just a little bit. You can see them continue to attack the rim and attack the, the lane. I'll give credit to SoCal. They played a much more up-tempo defense in the third quarter. And they did something that they didn't really do in the first two quarters. They made their free throws. So we'll let you know uh, about our DVDs right after we show you this nice alley-oop that was thrown in by Conroy. Bill Domhoff really dialed it up today. Well, for the seniors, last the last game that Santa Cruz played, which was against St. Francis, it was senior night. And there's a shot of Stu Walters, veteran coach for the Knights. Tonight is the last, although technically it was, wasn't supposed to be, the first time these two teams met. It was a rainy night, and it was supposed to be played here, and it rained inside. 
So they moved the game over to Soquel, so they just sort of flip-flop their home games. But this is the final night for the seniors for Santa Cruz. They may get a CCS bid and play here at home, but they want to do it in a style. Off balance, and Hanson's fouled as he went up. Santa Cruz won the SCCAL last season with this run-and-gun offense, and they are poised to win the regular season championship again. All you've got to do, and Hanson did a nice job. He went baseline, pulled up. He had a man there, a little bit of a head fake. Get the player to start to leave his feet, then lean into him. You'll get a blocking call. Seconds, no good. 24 point lead for Santa Cruz. They've led by as many as 28. They've got their original five back in the game. And Walters on a hip check is called for the foul. He gets to the line, excuse me, the foul's against Hanson. You see the fans here? A lot of discussion in the, in the, in the Santa Cruz gym. Sports just makes people talk. Although in basketball, you have to yell in order to communicate. Baseball is a conversation sport. Especially tonight. It's just been very loud. That was, I believe, the fifth against Hanson. So, Beto Almedo makes it 13 Cardinals who will play today. Walters makes the front end. Oh. Players act like it was a one and one. It was a tenth team, or yeah, it was a one and one. Everybody confused. With the pace of this game, that'd be easy. Second is no good. Still a 23 point lead for the Cardinals. Hodges is back into the game. Conroy into the lane. Wide open St. John 18 footer. Nothing at next. That's 11 points on the evening for St. John's. And you can see he set up baseline to the right of the basket. The rotation brought him right where he wanted to be. It was a nice rhythm to make the shot. Handoff Walters swings left side. Acroft three on the way. Got it. It's five points for Acroft. Almeida. Cardinals having trouble crossing half court. Ball is loose, and Soquel ends up with it. Walters, right wing, Vincent. Had the open three. Acroft has a wide open three left wing. No good as Almedo closed out on him. Hodges is Snowden on him. Drives left side, floats it up. It's no good. Acroft. Down the lane he comes. Ball is loose. Stolen away. Hodges with St. John. Hodges tried to float it underneath. St. John as he's falling out. Gets it to Hodges and he can't roll it in. Walters up the court. No look pass. Acroft takes a skip back. Wild ball. Finally a foul is called. I tell you one thing as far as the officiating is concerned. It's been a tough night for the officials because both of these teams are really using their bodies. They're slamming into each other. So as an official, you have a decision to make. How rough do you want it to be? Do you let them play and risk it getting too far out of control? Or do you, you know, where do you get that control line going? Five against St. John, who I can not see on your screen, but just walked off the court and hit the showers. Why not? Well, my day's done. We're <laughs> up by 22. Walters makes the first. It's a 21-point game. Sam, who's one of the better scorers in the league, they've really 
put a noose around him. He didn't score in the first two quarters. He's got seven now, so he's starting to make it up a little bit, but uh, is that great saying a little bit too little too late? And the second is good. DeMeo's in the backcourt for the Santa Cruz Cardinals. Almeida crosses it over to Abraham. Smart move by Abraham. Goes down the middle. Didn't see anything there. No shot. Not an opportunity to pass. Just brings it all the way right back up on top. There's a nice screen set by Salmon. Ball swung out right side. Three in and out. And an over the back against Conroy. Tim, a while back, you had mentioned that Santa Cruz continues to move that nice motion offense that they have. They send somebody through the lane or the person with the basketball goes through the lane. And because it's continual movement and it happens pretty darn quick, you're right. Sokel moves more as an amoeba instead of as an individual trying to get that one. So they'll pull off. Santa Cruz isn't, as Pete Newell, as Coach Newell said, they're very unselfish. They just kick the ball out. Guy's got a wide open look at it with a pretty good percentage shot. 19 point game. It's the closest Sokel's been in the second half. 18 is the lead. 56 36, 5 50 41 remaining in the game. Almeida, Abraham bounced it down. The second effort's no good. And Conroy was fouled over the back by Vincent. I can't believe he didn't call a traveling. Or at least a jump ball. Ball goes up. He's actually the hand right on top. They both came right back down on the floor. So it should have been either traveling or jump ball. Not none of the above. The two free throws for Clayton Conroy. And he misses the first. Seconds from Conroy. Good. I mentioned earlier to you know, Pete Newell Jr., we, we had him on at halftime, and the biggest banner in here is his final game in Sacramento at Arco Arena. It was a state championship for Santa Cruz. And that was one of the great stories you will ever see anywhere in high school uh, sports. It was, and that team was a fabulous team. Good unity, good camaraderie, and tremendous players. Widget airs that one. And that Santa Cruz team won the CCS championship, they won the NorCal championship, and they won a state championship. Abraham throws it back. He's got it cross half court. He just will before the 10 second call. He's got the speed. That's one thing all the players for Santa Cruz has, good foot speed. To Mayo, throws that one away. It's always fun doing all the games here on CTV. You remember names, to Mayo, a big first baseman for Santa Cruz's baseball team as Samet steals away. Abraham has the ball, a great defensive back. Almeida leaves it off wide open, Samet's jumper, clanks off the iron. That's one thing I like about both, you know, this squad, Santa Cruz and so many of the other schools, lots of two or multi-sport athletes. I think it's really important that these athletes play more than just one sport. Gives them a little, a little bit more of an opportunity, make some different friends, have some fun, and who knows? You may, you may go to college playing that other sport. Basketball may be your number one fun sport, but if you're a good baseball player, Everybody. somebody get it. 57-38 with 4-11 remaining in the game. But it seems like, I don't know, I don't want your thoughts on this, Kurt, that any time a player has a decision between I'm going to play basketball or football or basketball or baseball, uh, why do they always choose basketball? It seems like it's always basketball that the player chooses if they have a choice. Yeah, well, I'm going to go part of it is it's a, it's a fast-paced type of a game. You know, it's... It's a lot more exciting. 
things happen in a, in a, in a quicker hurry. You're indoors. Yeah. For starters. And you just watch Sam Walters just kick the ball out for Akrop, and he's got that nice look, and you can see that great rhythm. Up he goes and drops it on in. And, you know, baseball's one of those sports, softball too, where if you make a mistake, there's no hiding. Yeah. If you're the pitcher and you throw the ball down to pump, and somebody like DeMeo turns and hits it like 400 feet, everybody knows who threw it. Uh, there's, I don't know if there's more or less pressure in either one of those sports, but in baseball, there's there's no hiding and there's nobody behind you to pick you up if you blow it. The center's not going to be there to pick up and maybe block the other guy's shot. 19 point lead for Santa Cruz halfway through the fourth. And there's another foul. Abraham's called for it. Now you see DeMeo out here. I hope he's going to go out and play baseball. And starting in February, all of the spring sports start moving up. Yeah, everybody jumping on the back and you see DeMeo able to get that block. But that's a smart play by DeMeo. The foul's already been called. Don't allow the, your, your opponent. Yeah, no, that's a beautiful decision. Don't allow that potential ball to get in there. Maybe the official is going to call a continuation. Never seen a foul called on the on the shot after a foul is already called. Shearer will come back in as Samick comes out. Conroy is in. Just the You mentioned it's like a hockey game. It's just players coming in and out yep. constantly. Line change. The only difference in uh, basketball, you have to have a timeout to make the, the line change. Hockey, do it on the fly. Conroy says, uh, a little help down here, please. And Almedo shows to the ball. He's double teams. Look how calm these uh, Santa Cruz players are. Almedo's uh, one of the players off the bench, and he's as calm as on the ball as anybody else. Yeah, they, they work hard. Their practices are intense. Almedo says, we've got it. The officials say otherwise. But when you have, and, and Stu Walters does the same thing, uh, Billy D does, their practices are of an intense nature. And, and if for Santa Cruz, when you've got 10 guys, arguably more than that, but 10 that I can put my finger on, that are interchangeable parts, you better play hard in practice as well as the game, or you're going to lose your spot. Sheer lays it in. A 16-point lead for Santa Cruz, 3.30 remaining. Hodges, great pass, right side, jumper, rolls out. Hodges deserved an assist for that pass to Conroy. He really did. That was a good shot. It went way down in. And the ball's not falling quite as much as it used to for Santa Cruz. They backed off the throttle a little bit. Good heads up play by Elko Sayre to get the ball, throw it off his opponent, keeping the ball in Sokel's hands to get it out of bounds. But only 17 on the shot clock. 57-41. Santa Cruz has been stuck on that 57 for a while, actually. Sokal's done a good job defensively. The lead was as big as 28 for Santa Cruz. Abraham lost that rebound. DeMeo runs in to St. John. And I don't think about hurt him. No. He's like made out of iron. He's, he was a great football player. He's a fantastic basketball player. I actually think he hurt the floor. <laughs> the floor here is old. He's through the lane, a nice scoop shot for Cordoza, who we had not seen since his technical foul. That's a 14 point game with two and a half minutes left. Everybody get it closer. Timeout is going to go. Santa Cruz, Billy Domhoff calling a timeout. There's a shot of Billy. He's going to get his crew over there. It'll be interesting to hear what uh, Bill's going to have to say. The game whittling down just a little bit. It'll be more interesting to figure out what everything else is. Domhoff has got his extra sketch out. Drawing out what he's going to do. Let's uh, When he starts talking, let's start listening. 
So we see this nice weave through the lane by Cordoza. Fifty-seven, forty-three, two twenty left. Santa Cruz is going to do something here that they never do: take some time off the clock. Here's the weave. But they continue to run that offense to look for a shot down in low, and they got it with Caneo. Foul against Shearer. And DeMeo probably just put this one away, 59-43, 208 remaining. You see that movement away from the basket, way up above 30, you know, 25, 30 feet away. They start that movement going. Meanwhile, underneath, you've got people like DeMeo or St. John's or Conroy starting to work their way into the paint. The passing lane comes open, and they get it. Pull up, widget in the lane. Santa Cruz leads by 15 under two minutes left. To Mayo, up the right side. And he will run the weave up top. Abraham, so quick on the ball. Double teams, no problem, gets out of it. And you can see the coaching that Billy Domhoff has done. They're, these ball handlers are good both left and right. Abraham looks to release it. And it's stolen away by Sokel. Down the court it comes, out of bounds, off of. St. John. Wholesale changes for the SoCal Knights. Sixty to forty-five. One, two, three, showing on the clock. In the lane, bank shot is good for Dylan Hunter. Coaches have not stopped coaching, and the players have not stopped playing. It's one of the beauties. No. Hodges, oh my gosh. Eight points. Abraham steals it away. St. John can't get the lay in. But three Cardinals were there, and it was Conroy who laid it up and good. 17-point game, 50 seconds remaining. Think anybody's looking for a slam dunk? Yeah. I thought St. John was going to try to throw uh, it down. That's what I was thinking. He just couldn't quite get it going enough. Abraham had that one taken away. Snowden. And fouls called against Hodges. Hodges looked like he was trying to avoid contact. He was. Good job by Snowden. He knew that the pressure was coming right behind him. So he went in. As if he'd have gone for the layup, I guarantee it would have been blocked. 31 seconds left, 64-47, and a timeout called for by Santa Cruz. That's a good timeout because you'll let the fans enjoy an SCCAL championship. You got that one, plus you want to make sure, as I say, both of these coaches continue to coach. Dom Hoff's drawing up a plan what he wants to do off the free throw, whether it's a make or a miss. Stu Walters right now is just rallying his troops, saying, all right, we got it handed to us. We got our heads handed to us tonight by a team that came out ready to play ball. Yeah, we, that's a good point. We really weren't ready to play ball, or they were more prepared to play ball mentally than we were. Take your pick, whatever argument you want to use. That's a great point, Kurt, because I don't think Sokel came out with anywhere close to the intensity that... Santa Cruz came out with. No, I think, you know, Soquel 
beat Santa Cruz in the Dads Club tournament, 51 to 43. And then uh, they just barely, Santa, Santa Cruz just did beat Soquel 52-49 in league play. So a bit of overconfidence, not with Stu Walters at the helm, but you know, sometimes the coach is coaching one thing and the players are thinking of another thing. But when you stop off the bus and at the end of the first eight minutes, you're down 18 to five, somebody wasn't ready to do something. Yeah, the score was also uh, like 38 to 10 at one point, and it was uh, the final score is indicative of how much better Santa Cruz was. Yeah, they stepped right back out out there. Snowden looking for his first points on the evening for the for the SoCal Knights. You know, it's a little bit of this is playing time for all of the reserves that, for SoCal that hasn't really gotten in the game yet. And this is good because when you get into tournament time, you never, ever know when one of these reserves is going to be needed. Second is good. Nice fastball. Ball should go all the way back to the other side. It was never touched. I think. I think DeMeo might have gotten a glove on that thing as it was going by him. 64-48. And another basket for Soquel, 64-50. Hodges through the alley-oop for DeMeo, it's no good. Santa Cruz continues to try to score. 64-50 is your final. Santa Cruz defeats Soquel, and Santa Cruz wins an outright SCCAL League Championship. Kurt, any, any thoughts on this one? Well, I'll tell you, we had talked about it just briefly before. Santa Cruz came out just ready to play basketball. They did a fantastic job and they spread the wealth around a great deal. You've got Jamie St. John with 11 points. DeMeo finishing with nine points. Hodges with eight points. So it gives you an idea how even these guys are and, and how they play the basketball game. Now Santa Cruz plays that high flying style and if you're going to beat them, you're gonna to have to get somebody on the ball to stop the ball. And sometimes that's a little tough to do when you got somebody as big and strong as Jamie St. John is, who's slamming it, slamming it through down there. And we'll go to our player of the game. Rusty is standing by. Our George H. Wilson player of the game, Jamie St. John. I, I've never seen a team this intense at the outset, and you led the charge. Where did that come from tonight? Um, you know, earlier in the season, we lost to Soquel in the Dads Club by about eight points or so. And ever since then, you know, we just, we don't want to lose to them again. And we don't, we don't want to lose at all. So, I don't know, there's been a lot of talk about tonight, earlier this week, the whole week, and we just came out ready to go. We were fired up. All of us were. Was it all amongst teammates or the coaches part it, of that? It was almost like, it was like the whole school, basically. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, a lot of teachers, just a lot of parents, a lot of people from around the community. And you, you may see these guys again. Yeah, we, we probably will. They're, them and Aftos, they're really good. We'll probably see them in a SCCL tournament. Well, congratulations Thank on you. the game, the championship, the regular season Thank championship. Thank you. I love my team. I love my team. Good luck in the, in the tourney. Jamie St. John, our George H. Wilson player of the game. Now back to Kurt and Tim. Thanks, Rusty. George H. Wilson, mechanical contractors, family owned and operated for over 90 years, providing heating, plumbing, and mechanical contracting services. Geo Wilson is a proud member of Think Local First. On the web at geohwilson.com. Once again, the final here from Santa Cruz, 64-50. The Cardinals, SCCAL Boys Varsity Champions. We'll take a final break when we come back. The full highlights of this one. Sixty-four, 
50, the final Santa Cruz defeats Soquel in our SCCAL Men's Basketball Game of the Week. And Santa Cruz collects a SCCAL championship. Congratulations to the Cardinals after the girls of Soquel won the regular season championship in game number one. With Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz, and we want to thank some of the people who have made this broadcast possible. First of all, Santa Cruz Diner. At Santa Cruz Diner, you always find great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1998. Santa Cruz Diner is kid friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And by Upper Crust Pizza. On Santa Cruz's west side at Mission and Swift, family owned and operated since 1979, Upper Crust offers nightly dinner specials. And every Tuesday night is all you can eat pizza. Dine in or take out on the web at uppercrustsc.com or call 423-9010. Here with Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz. And Kurt, uh, game number two of our doubleheader, the boys of Santa Cruz like to run, and they ran tonight. They ran and ran, and just for emphasis, they ran hard. They were coming down. Now, Stokel had a couple of good opportunities, but they were out of this quick. But Shear battling underneath, gets the put back for the quick two points. There's Jamie St. John's. He's looking inside to Conroy. That little alley-oop was very effective all evening long for Santa Cruz. Stokel started to play a little bit better defense, and once you get through with this scrum, Stokel started to attack the middle a little bit more. That allows them to get the ball to kick out, work it around. And Sam Walters, who was shut out, in the first half of play, was able to drain that three. Hansen looking for somebody to get down. He spots Conroy, sits it over underneath the DeMeo, who just had a monster game inside the paint all day long with rebounding and everything else. But Santa Cruz just kept right on coming. If they're not gonna make the inside shot, Abraham was gonna be able to make the outside shot. They keep kicking it inside, working. You see a lot of motion. Kick it out to our player of the game. St. John's, and he just buries about a 17-footer, and that was part of it. Mr. Inside, outside, Santa Cruz ran, hit their percentage shots, did everything, and did it very well. Yeah, and for the Santa Cruz Cardinals, they get to put up another banner here at the historic gymnasium, and uh, we want to congratulate Santa Cruz on this league championship. And, uh, Kurt, we will head into the SCCAO playoffs next week. And that will be our next broadcast here on CTV. Uh, hate to put you on the spot, but you think we're going to see these two teams in the championship game on both the girls' and the boys' sides? Well, I think the mm, – wow, that's a good one. The girls' side, I'm going to say yes. The boys' side, why well, you've got Aptos, and they want to get back there. They want to get a payback for SoCal because SoCal recently beat them. So we're, whoever we see in that championship game for the boys – it's going to be a slobber knocker. So it's going to be a great game no matter who we see, the boys and the girls. Doubleheader a week from tonight. We'll let you know who wins the postseason championship of the SCCL. But we know the regular season champions. So Kel defeats Santa Cruz in the girls game, and Santa Cruz returns the favor in the boys game. Those two teams are the two champions of the SCCAL's regular season. For Kurt Edwards, my name is Tim Swartz. Also for the third member of our broadcast crew, Rusty Reed. Have a great night, and we'll see you next time.